All right, everyone, like usual, we're doing something a little bit different. This episode, I'm doing something that I actually haven't seen too many people do. Uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking my new map of Nosfari, which is how you say it, and I'm going to be making a regional map. Uh, how is this different than a region map is because I'm going to be dividing this large country, because this is... Uh, about the size of Australia or like, you know, most other large countries. I'm going to be breaking it down into territories, um, similar to like Canada or the United States or most countries. Most countries have divisions within them. These ones are going to be formed mainly by natural, uh, natural pieces of the country. And so, for example, you can see here one of the major dividing lines is going to be these mountains, uh, this huge mountain range that crosses through most of the country will divide the region because these people on one side and the other are going to have a very very different form of life a very different culture uh they may not necessarily speak a different language since they're all are all one region maybe at one point they did but at maybe at a different point they did not and so i'm going to be making these different divisions and the way i'm doing this is i am using a clipping mask so i create a new layer over just one of the background layers and I'm creating a clipping mask. It is below all of the other work I've done. So it's below uh, all the mountains on the layer like ranking it is below the cities, the forests, all that. So you can still see all these cool features. I'm also making sure that I'm using a uh, pretty, pretty low on the opacity scale so that way you can actually see through it. I did encounter one error though. Uh, this top portion, the reason it's a bit harder to see through this pink and or this purplish color, and later on the green that you'll see, is because uh, that is the part that I had originally copied and pasted it in from my previous map. And remember, I did not redraw it, because I'm trying to save time. These aren't made to necessarily be professional works. These are made to just be useful for my players and fun for me to make. So... If you wonder why the purple side and the green side are a little bit odd colored and later on the gray side as well, that's why. But I'm just going through and I'm taking, uh, it is one single layer, but I'm going through and I'm just coloring them. And I'm trying to use pretty different colors. I kind of struggled a little bit to find a good color for the last one because that red down at the bottom is kind of an orange, kind of red, kind of a peach. So I didn't really have a good color for the last one, so I went with the gray. You'll see it in a moment here. But I'm just going through and coloring it. And it's okay if I kind of mess up a bit. I did my best to try to preserve the mountains. Uh, saying that the, the mountain is on one side or the other. But it kind of crisses and crosses. Because that's usually how it works in real life as well. Is that maybe one side of the mountain is one. One is the other. And so on. And I think this will be really cool for my players. Because then the characters in the game and them themselves can specify which region they want to go to. Because... This is a big country. There's no way it's just one unified country and that's it. You know, that's all. They rule the whole thing. That'd be just ridiculous. So I'm just kind of putting some finishing touches on it here. Just making sure everything's the right size, the right shape. Finding little spots and areas where there may be color missing. Kind of making sure it looks good. Zooming in a bit here and I'm looking for like just minor little spots where I need to make sure. I'm also checking the border here just to make sure that everything looks perfect. Now, just like you did in like middle school and high school when you had to learn about countries or the states, if you're like me and I mean you're in America, uh, you got to outline it. You got to have a nice thick solid border. It makes it look a lot better. At least in my opinion it does. I always did this with my maps when you're like colored penciling and stuff, you know. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm providing more of a thick border. I'll be doing it for each one in their own color or a shade of their own color. It was a little bit hard to kind of pick a good color for each of these, but I do manage to find one and I am just following along the border, just tracing the lines. It's a very easy job. It also helps because Especially on some of these boards, I may have missed some of the color or spots I should have colored. And so I made sure to fill those in. And once again, the that uh, earlier copied and pasted piece, the lines are going to look a little bit more uh, thick. They're going to look a little bit less transparent. They're a little bit more opaque, you could say. I apologize for that. But again, 
the purpose of the maps I make is not necessarily for professional grade work. If this was, you know, if I was being paid for this, I would spend a lot more time and I would go back. I would make sure to redraw everything and make it all look perfect. But this is just for my players so they can quickly see and I'm sure they're going to see this and be really excited about it. I know I am at the very least. So I'm just going through. This green was a little bit too dark, so I tried to make it a little bit a little bit lighter. It was a little bit too much for me. I'm just going through and outlining. Once again, I had to make sure I'm selecting the right one because of the copied and pasted area. And you can see it looks very different. But that's okay. I always thought this was such a cool idea, and I don't know why. I haven't seen many map makers do this. I've seen plenty of people who draw lines for different sectors, but they don't necessarily color shade them. I think it's so interesting because we do it in real life so often. Like if you look at a map of the United States, every state is a different color. If you look at a map of Canada, every uh, territory is a different color. So I, I found that really interesting. I've always thought it's really cool. Um, it kind of reminds me of when you take like a if you there's like programs online where you can look at a map and then you can put different filters on it so you can say okay what is uh, population density look like what does what are the political boundaries what are uh, this and that um, it's kind of like when you're playing Civ I think especially in Civ 6 the newest one they do a really good job where they have different map filters and you can see what are the boundaries of the technical continents but then what are the political boundaries but then what are the trade route boundaries and what are the religious routes looking like and so I may be doing more maps like this in the future to kind of show where is their activity going on on my map um, but other plans for the future are to make a closer up version of this I will be doing a zoomed in uh, part of this map because I, I have determined a starting area where my players are most likely going to begin they haven't fully decided yet I'm gonna give them a few options but I know where I would want them to and so I'll be doing a zoomed in map of that region and I'll be kind of showing that process a little bit more because it is a little bit different just a little anyway now I'm just putting names on them and these names are not final necessarily they're probably what i'll stick with but a good dungeon master never nails things down uh, it's always good to be flexible and be able to change what names you think of and you can see i'm turning on the names on and off to get inspiration from the surrounding area not that i want everything to sound exactly the same but i will i want it all to be the same theme and the same style and maybe borrow some of the same words that i've used um, to show that those words have meaning um, because there is a language of Nosferi and that, yes, there is common tongue. Like that is a language in Dungeons and Dragons. But I kind of like the idea that each country you go to has a bit of a different twist on common and that there are some words that you don't necessarily understand if you're not from that country or haven't learned that language. I think that helps make it a little bit more unique. You might be wondering right now, but Alec, why can't we see the text? You're, you're making it the same color. Don't worry. Just like I did with the text from the other maps, I'm going to be going through and I will be, as you can see now, uh, kind of putting a bit of a, a glowy background. The reason I, li I really like this style is it kind of looks like the artist. Like I imagine that, you know, an artist in the world of my setting drew this map. Obviously, this would be ridiculous to hand draw, but still. And I like to think that Whenever they do, whenever I do labels like this, they they like erased it a little bit. Like they took an eraser and they smudged it out, or they erased it, and then that's when they wrote the labels in. And that's why I did the labels in the same style on the previous map. Anyway, we're drawing to a close here. I just want to take again a second to thank everybody who is actually watching these videos. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns about the setting, about my style, my process. If you have any critiques or things I could improve on, let me know. Or if you have anything you want me to draw. I'm totally down to just draw an encounter map. I'm going to be trying to do more of this map drawing and map encounters and all of that. So I think we're coming to the end here. Just kind of fix up those last few names. And there you have it. The regional Nosferi map. Thank you, everybody. And have a great rest of your day.